Jackson is now six months old. Um, this isn't going to be his six month update, but this is going to be a breastfeeding video because um, we've been breastfeeding now for six months and that is a really huge milestone for, for me anyway. I consider it a milestone mainly because I never thought we would make it this far. I never thought we'd make it past like, you know, in the beginning, honestly, I never thought I'd make it past two weeks, let alone you know, two months. So the fact that we've made it this far and we're still going with it um, is amazing to me. And for those of you who are wondering how long we plan on breastfeeding, um, the way that I've approached it is just, you know, in the beginning I would set small goals like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for two weeks or I'm going to do it for a month. And um, or then I moved it to three months. And then once we made it to three months, I moved it to six months. So now that we've made the six months, we've gotten past some of the really, really, you know, hard part of it. It's pretty much smooth sailing at this point, so I don't see us giving it up anytime soon. I'd like to make it to a year. I'm not decided yet if we're going to have him, you know, let me know when it's time or or if I'm going to, you know, decide make that decision for the both of us. It'll really just depend on where we are at the time. So, um, but yeah, I would really like to make it to a year, and I really think we can do it, so we'll just keep trying. So yeah, I've been breastfeeding for six months now, and I figured, you know, I've, I've learned a lot along the way. I've overcome a lot of issues, um, you know, considering in the beginning that I was going to give up after the first week, like I was really that discouraged that I was... <laughs> that I was really gonna just give up after the first like two days of it. It was just so frustrating, I was so emotional. It was just not working and um, you know, eventually you know, we got through those problems and if there's anything that I can help any of you with, I would be more than happy to do that. Um, if you've got video requests on the, su on the subject of breastfeeding, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make videos. Even if I just help one person, you know, to me that's worth it. Because I know how important it is to, um, you know, to breastfeed our, our children and, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not bashing anybody if that's, if they weren't able to, but like, you know, I just know the feeling of really wanting to be able to do it and having your heart set on it and it can be really, you know, heartbreaking if it doesn't work out the way that you thought it would. So the topic of this video is going to be issues that I've had with um, supply. Actually supply is just the general topic of this video. Um, and I'll give you a warning, some things in here might be considered TMI, so if you're squeamish or don't want to hear about or periods, <laughs> then you should probably stop watching. Just a fair warning. Um, so I guess I'll start with um, oversupply. Um, I have been an overproducer since about the second month that I've been breastfeeding. Um, supply was never really an issue for me. I guess in the beginning when he would cluster feed a lot um, you know there were a couple times when he would just like drain me absolutely dry and I would get really freaked out about it and I was just so convinced I didn't have a, enough milk there was a few times that I did feel that way but as some of you already know you know that cluster feeding was building my supply up at the time so um, that was kind of taking care of itself um, but I also t started taking fenugreek, which is an herbal supplement that naturally increases your supply. Um, another thing that I used was mother's milk tea by Traditional Medicinals. Um, and I'm not a big tea drinker, but I found that the taste wasn't that bad. So um, you just put a little bit of honey or sugar, or, you know, whatever you use to sweeten your, your coffee or tea, and, you know, it tastes fine. Um, and I also eat <clears throat> a bowl of oatmeal pretty much every night before I go to bed. Um, drink a ton of water. Just try to keep myself relaxed and not stressed out. Um, that's also really important. And nursing, free, nursing and pumping frequently. Um, those are the things that I did to you know build up my supply. Um, technically, oversupply is. Um, considered, you know, a problem. It's not, it's not normal to have an oversupply. But of all the problems you can have um, with breastfeeding, oversupply really, you know, it's, it's a good problem to have, I guess you could say. Um, it can cause issues for a lot of women, though, um, especially if you've got an overactive letdown, 
Um, you know, you could have, you know, milk spraying everywhere and, it, and your child could choke, which is, you know, a problem for some, for some breastfeeding mothers. Um, it's also, you know, c kind of, you know, hard to deal with sometimes, um, waking up just super engorged and having to pump more often, um, rather than just, you know, being able to go about your business and feeding your baby when he's hungry, you know, you've got to pump extra too, to relieve the pain and, and keep up the supply if you're, you know, trying to have an oversupply. But in the long run, you know, an oversupply can be a good thing because that means you've got, you know, extra milk stored up um, just in case something were to happen. Or in my case, you could donate it to somebody else who could use it, which is also a really awesome experience. Yeah, I've, I decided um, when he was about three months old that I, I was wanting to donate our extra best milk. Um, we've got a really, really tiny freezer. Like, we're in a rental home right now, so um, yeah, the, the fridge freezer is just so small. I'm a good, like, four or five inches at least taller than the fridge, so <laughs> um, yeah. it's It just doesn't have a lot of room in it, so I started having to send my frozen milk to my in-laws' house for storage, and um, their freezer started filling up, so um, you know, I just figured he's getting all his milk that he needs directly from me or from, you know, from a bottle that we, um, we keep his bottle supply in the fridge, so he's either getting it from me or the fridge, and all the freezer milk was just stuff that I wasn't going to be able to use before it went bad. Um, freeze, frozen milk does last longer than, um, milk you keep in the fridge, obviously, especially if you keep it in a deep freezer. Um, but yeah, my milk was gonna, you know, go bad in, you know, four months or so, four to six months, so I just, I decided that rather than having to throw that away because I wasn't gonna use it, I, you know, needed to donate it. I was able to donate my extra milk to, um, actually a couple different women, um, both of whom I found on Milkshare.org, which is a uh, fantastic, fantastic resource. Um, I also found out about another um, resource to find mothers in need for breast milk. Uh, it's called Eats on Feet. It's Facebook-based, which is, you know, genius because, I don't know, I think people just use Facebook so much these days that it's just... It's just a really convenient way to communicate with other moms. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing with my extra milk. Um, at some point, I've considered um, keeping it just in case, you know, my supply were to dry up all of a sudden, or I don't know. I'm just I'm just worried that my supply would dry up, and I want to have I want him on breast milk, you know, for the first year, whether he gets it directly from me or not. But um, so anyway, yeah, I mean. Having an oversupply can complicate things as far as, you know, you have to block feed sometimes um, to make sure your baby's getting the, the right amount of uh, fore milk and hind milk, which is really important because it's got different fat content and, um, you know, your baby does need both. So, yeah, block feeding is basically just when you feed on one side for feeding and switch to the other side for the other feeding. Um, and if you're trying to maintain your supply, basically what I did was feed on one side, um, pump on the other, and then switch for the next feeding. Um, I, don't, I don't do that anymore. I really only pump before bed, sometimes, and when I wake up in the mornings. But, um, yeah, this is just what I used to do. And I'm still, I'm still overproducing for the most part, but I'm not really concerned with it anymore just because I'm more laid back and... You know, it's, it's great if I can help another mom out, but I, I don't have as much time to pump anymore. Like, you know, if I've got free time, I don't want to be stuck to the couch, um, you know, using that time to pump if I don't have to. And I'm, I'm really grateful I've been able to help out a couple of mothers. Um, um, one mother I donated to, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't produce milk because of uh, surgery she had as a preteen. And then another mother... Um, was just she was just having to supplement a little bit with formula and her child had you know he, he wasn't digesting the formula as well as the breast milk so oh I have the funniest baby oh gosh I know this vlog is all over the place um another really interesting um 
bit of information that I've learned through breastfeeding is that your cycle can totally affect your supply. Um, and I, you know, I learned that the hard way. Um, I'm, I'm one of those women, unlucky, you know, even though I've been breastfeeding, I was unlucky enough to have my cycle start right back up. Um, and by my third, I think it was my third period after I had them, at like three or four months postpartum, I think I was officially ovulating again. Um, and for whatever reason, my periods have just been different from, from that point on. And um, it was so weird, you know, it was like, like, bam, one day, like I had, I went from making more than enough milk, like way more than enough milk to like not even having enough to feed him. Like I was having to feed him with bottles. And of course I was continuing to pump, but, um, you know, I was really freaked out about it because I was, it just kind of like hit me out of nowhere. And, you know, I just, I was not ready to give up breastfeeding and it was just, it was just so sudden. Um, it was like that for like two days. I went out and bought one, a new breast shield for my, um, my pump, which is the part that, you know, fits over and attaches to the bottle. Um, tried that, got some, got in, which also came with a new valve and membrane. And, you know, that didn't really help. Um, I was taking more fenugreek and I was just, I could not figure out what the problem was. Um, until I asked, you know, a friend of mine who's a midwife, um, it's the same lady who came over to my house several times during the first, you know, week home to help me try to get my son to latch. So she's, she's a saint in my book, um, to begin with. So I, I wrote her a message on Facebook and asked her if it was normal to um, have your supply just like suddenly di disappear um, right before your period starts. Because around like the day after my um, my milk had like completely dried up, I got my period again. So um, I was just you know I was wondering if the two were related at all, and come to find out, you know it's totally totally normal for that to happen for your for your period to affect um, your milk supply. And I'd never heard of that. And, you know, before I, I wrote her the message asking her when I had suspected they were connected, I, I Googled a bunch of information. I couldn't find very much, if, that, if anything at all. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I want to make sure I mention that just in case anybody else had that happen to them and was wondering if the two were related or if that's normal. Or, you know, if your cycle hasn't come back yet, just like as a heads up, um, your cycle may affect your breast, your supply of breast milk. So, um, you know, if and when that happens to you, don't freak out. Um, the good news is it is temporary. As long as you're continuing to nurse and pump, keep hydrated, um, you know, do everything like you have been doing, your supply should return, um, you know, within a couple days of your period starting. Um, it's just, you know, with breastfeeding and, and you know, your hormones, it's just such a delicate balance and, and any fluctuation in your body can, you know, change that. So I was also like freaking out that maybe I was pregnant, like maybe that's what was causing my hormonal thing, but then my period started. So I was just like, whoosh, close call. <laughs> um, and a little tip the midwife told me was that um, you can take, I think it's 1500 milligrams of calcium combined with five to 700 milligrams of magnesium um, and it's important that you take it together because the magnesium helps the calcium absorb better. Um, and, but if you take that, um, you know, a few days before your period is supposed to start, it should help prevent the, the huge drop in supply. So that's what I do now. Um, since I'm charting, um, I can kind of anticipate my period a little bit. Um, you know, my cycles are obviously still pretty irregular. They're anywhere from like 30 to 45 days. But, um, yeah, if I'm expecting my period or, or if there's something weird going on with my supply, I pretty much know that it's my cycle's about to start again. So if that tip helps anybody out there, you know, great. I wish I'd known it sooner. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, that's about it. I'm sorry this video was all over the place. Um, I just had a lot to talk about. So if you guys have any questions about anything, um, you know, if there's, any way my experience can, you know, benefit others, I would be more than happy to to make videos about breastfeeding. Um, um, that's about it, guys. Uh, I will do an update about Jackson um, 
a more general update about him soon. Um, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, guys.